What's going on, guys? So we are back, and I have the second edition here of the Adventures of Junior Rubble. I wore my The Adventures of Junior Rubble t-shirt for this reading, and the hashtag, thanks to my business partner, Brandon Freeney, is reading with Ramon. So I think we'll be using that moving forward. Uh, thanks again to the CEA, the Community Education Alliance, as well as New Mount Olive Baptist Church for helping us out and making sure that we're keeping our kids active during this time, making sure all youth is doing something. If you know somebody, please send them the video, let them know we're doing this. We have some vocabulary included with this as well. But without further ado, I'm gonna to read to you the adventures of Junior and Rubble. Junior couldn't stop thinking about the creepy oil creature that had attacked the coastline the day before. Where had it come from? Would it strike again? Worrying about the oil monster helped Junior to ignore his growing unease about what had happened to him when he fought the thing. He stroked Rubble's big head. What happened yesterday, boy? Rubble looked up at Junior, dropped his mouth open, and let his tongue lull out. Oh, you're a lot of help, Junior laughed. Rubble jumped up and licked Junior's face, sliding back with his head and front legs down like he wanted to play. Okay, okay. But after, we're going to get the guys and go on a little lookabout. He grabbed Rubble's favorite toy on the way out. Rubble barked happily, bouncing out of the house with Junior. The two of them played rough and tumble for half an hour in the morning sun, getting dirt all over themselves. But even though he was having a great time with Rubble, every time Junior touched the ground, he felt a tiny drop of queasiness. It was almost as if something were dripping up from the earth and into his skin. That's enough fooling around for this morning, Rubble. Junior chuckled. I've got chores to do before I call the guys. Junior walked around the back of the house so he could pass by his bedroom window in the side yard. He looked at the golden rain tree for a moment, then reached out and touched his trunk. He closed his eyes and thought he could hear the earth humming through the roots of the tree and up into its branches and leaves. His hand thrummed as if he was holding his phone when it vibrated. He jumped back. Junior had been worn out from the tussling with rubble, but now he felt like he could run for miles without stopping. It scared him. What is happening to me? He said to his raised palms. Rubble whined at his side, nudging him with his big gold and black head, prancing his white front paws in his hands. Let's get moving. Junior stroked his best friend and went around to the front door to take care of garbage duty. He took two bags out to the curb. One he put in the can, marked trash only, and the other he put in the one marked recycling only. His parents had taught him to be kind to the earth in whatever way he could. Then he went back in, washed his hands, and unloaded the dishwasher for his mom. Duty's done for the day. He called up Jack and Seth. Ready to go on a hunt with me? He asked each of them. Naturally, they were. Where do we start, asked Jack, bouncing his ratty old hacky sack back and forth on his ankle. It's probably started its life multicolored, but the colors had all bled to a fuzzy purplish brown. We could follow the coast from where I saw the oil ma uh, slick, Junior offered. That sounds like a lot of work to me, said Seth. Why don't we do a little research before we go running around the beach like a bunch of idiots? What kind of research, Junior asked. Jack sailed his hacky sack into Seth's chest. Seth batted it away like he was used to doing it. Well, how about, well, how big was the oil slick you saw? And how far out did it go? Junior recalled the morning before. It seemed really huge at the time. I was so upset at seeing it there. But now that I think about it, the main part was probably only about 50 feet or so across. It had these long finger-like projections coming off of it that made it look twice that big. That's still a lot of oil to be floating around like that near the shore, isn't it? Jack's face was serious, a rare occurrence. Seth tapped his finger on his chin. It may narrow our search a little. Let's go find out all the ways that oil can get into the ocean. Junior and Jack nodded and they headed inside to use Junior's computer to look it up. Wow, Jack just looked wide eyed at the fourth screen they had pulled up. I had no idea. Me either, said Junior. I never thought about all the boats and jet skis leaving oil in the water. 
What about all the runoff from the roads and parking lots, Seth added. Junior stood. Rubble growled at the glowing computer screen. That's almost 40% of all the oil that gets into the ocean. The only thing that puts more oil in the ocean is those natural oil seeps from the ocean floor itself. I just can't believe it. I thought it was mostly came from accidents. The three boys were all still for a moment. Okay, said Jack. We don't have a, a lot of boat or jet ski traffic near our beach, so maybe it came from one of those seeps. But wouldn't we have seen it? More of it before now, Seth asked. I still can't get used to the thought of so much oil coming, coming into the ocean naturally. Yeah, but you read the article, Seth, Junior pointed out. There are a lot of factors that keep it from reaching the surface. What I'm worried about is the runoff problem. What if it's not just from roads and parking lots or even driveways? I mean, that could explain the one oil slick, sure. But if it came from a business that wasn't being careful with oil disposal, we could have another oil mon uh, slick on our hands. And of course, he keeps almost saying monster because he, he believes he fought a monster, but he says slick so that his friends think it's just an oil slick and they don't know what's going on. Because Remember, he's scared to tell them that he has these powers. Junior's right, Seth popped his fist into his other palm. Why don't we head east toward the, towards the industrial park? Maybe we'll get lucky, Jack grinned. Works for me. Let's go. It was afternoon, so the boys fueled up on some turkey sandwiches and sports drinks before they headed out. Rubble happily snapped up the bits of meat and cheese the boys threw them. He was a little spoiled. The boys started off running down the beach, but soon slowed to walking in the wet sand. Once they got close to the industrial park, they alternated, check, alternated checking the beach and looking up at the buildings. None of the businesses were right on the water, of course. They were across the highway. Some of the signs were too small or too faded to read. Then one jumped right out at Junior. Look, he called to the others who had gotten ahead of him. They came running back. What is it? Jack asked, a bit breathless. That sign, it looks brand new. Junior pointed to a big white sign all lit up with the name Able Packaging. Look at that truck. They're loading, guys. Jack pointed out. The picture on the side looks like a bottle of motor oil. Let's get a closer look. Not today, you guys, Junior said. It's getting late. They're probably getting ready to close up, and Mom will be looking for rubble in me. Oh, man, I got to get home too, said Seth. How about tomorrow? We can start earlier. Junior agreed to meet Jack and Seth at 7 a.m., hoping that Abel Packaging wouldn't be open yet, since it would be Saturday and they could get a good look. Then he went home to have supper with his parents. After gin dinner, Junior took Rubble out for a walk. They stopped on the way back to stand in front of the golden rain tree. Junior just stared at it for several minutes. I really don't know what's happening to me, Rubble. Junior said as he reached out for the tree. I just know this tree is important and I want to be ready for tomorrow. Junior closed his eyes and imagined his smiling parents planting the tree the day he was born on American soil. That made him think about the earth and how strong and fragile it was at the same time. The next morning, Junior and Seth arrived just before 7 a.m. At 7.10, Jack came huffing down the beach, his summer blonde hair flying out beside his face. Sorry I'm late, he gasped. My dad needed me to help him put some stuff up in the attic before it got too hot. Jack gulped in some more air and grinned. He couldn't believe I was even up this early. No doubt, Seth gave Jack a little shove. Let's do this thing. The boys looked both ways, then crossed the highway to where the industrial complex was. They couldn't resist playing the secret agent and running from behind one truck or a stack of pallets to the next. When they got to Able Packaging Building, they picked a window on the side of the building out of sight of the highway then all tried to look through it at once. Rubble barked. The three boys <coughs> fell over each other. Rubble, Junior scolded. Keep it down. This is a covert mission. What Rubble whimpered. Then something caught his attention and he began to wander away from the window and the boys. 
Can you see anything, Jack asked? This window is filthy, Seth complained. Hold on, Junior said. It was partially propped up on Jack to see better. There's oil all over the floor. It looks like they've been using something to absorb most of it, but there's still a lot just pooling there. The other boys took turns looking. What a mess, Seth declared. Yeah, Jack agreed, but how does that prove it's their fault? Rubble barked again, but he was around the far corner of the building. Junior ran to where the big dog was jumping back and forth. There, at the corner of the building, was a small pool of black oil. But how? Jack began. I'll tell you how, Junior scowled. Look at the foundation. It's seeping out between the center block walls and the cement floor. Rubble put his nose to the ground and started to growl. The boys turned from the building to see him moving slowly back towards the highway. I don't see anything, Seth admitted. Hold up, boy. Junior put his hand on the dark fur of Rubble's back. Then he got down on his hands and knees and began to carefully wipe the sand away where Rubble's nose had just been. There, just below the surface, was a broken line of oil. Junior could feel his anger rise. He pounded his fist into the beach next to the trail. They're polluting the land and the ocean, he cried. Rubble started following the trail again. It meandered its way to the highway. Junior had to stop Rubble from walking onto the asphalt. Even he could see the trail there. What do we do, Jack said, balling up his fist. We call the EPA? That's what, Seth nodded vigorously. Junior didn't answer either of them. He had turned back towards Abel Packaging. He was so angry. Without thinking, he went down on one knee and thrust his hands into the sand on either side of the oil trail. Heat shimmers began to rise from the sand. The trail of oil lifted up out of the beach with the sand clinging to it. The sand began to shine and then to liquefy. Junior pulled his hands out. The morning sun flashed off the trail of oil that he had lifted from the sand just before it hit the beach and broke into long pieces of glass as fat as Junior's finger. The oil was trapped inside the glass. All the way back to the building, the boy spun around to see long, thick pieces of glass in the haphazard line all the way into the ocean. How? How did you do that? Jack stammered, falling back a step. Junior winced. I don't really know. Guys, you can't tell anybody, please, for my parents. Seth, Seth took a deep breath. Well, you can't keep that up. We still have to turn them in. But I guess we do it anonymous, anonymously? Do you think we can have time to clean up all that glass? Oh, man, Junior exclaimed. What are we even going to do with it? Jack grinned. I know. Let's put it, put it in one of their trucks. They'll be so freaked out, they'll never tell. After checking the road for traffic, the boys ran down to the ocean and collected all of the glass they could find working their way back to Able Packaging. They found a truck where the chain lock was loose enough to slip all that glass into and took off toward home. On the way, they stopped at the convenience store and called the EPA's number. It was the only place in town, probably in the whole state, that still had a payphone. The boys were quiet as they walked the rest of the way home. Junior was worried. We don't tell anyone, Jack said. But you gotta admit, it's pretty freaky to watch your friends you've known since you were six do something like that. It's freaky for me too, Jack and Seth. I don't know what's happening to me, and I was afraid to tell you. Now that's just dumb, Seth smiled. We're your best friends. Sure, it was a shock, but you've always been a little weird. Hey, Junior protested. They'd reach his backyard and the three boys began to wrestle. Naturally, Rubble wanted into the mix too. He jumped on Jack and licked his face. No fair, your, jaw, your dog just slimed me. And just like that, the tension was gone. And that is The Adventures of Junior and Rubble. And this is the second edition. So I appreciate you guys spending some time with me. Once again, thanks to the CEA Community Education Alliance, New Mount Olive Baptist Church. And if you would like that book as well from us, you can email us at positivitypays365 at gmail.com. And the vocabulary should be below with a description of the book as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.